Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Smiley Quanta. Smile for me. It's Sinquanta Cox Smith of www.sinquantacoxsmith.com. And today I am here with a new video in my journal series, uh, videos that I will be publishing all month long. So today we will talk about how to start your journal business. So disclaimer, I will not be telling you where to print any of the journals that I am showing today in this video because that's not the focus, all right? So if you wanna know where I print these journals, you can watch any of my other journal videos or you can stay tuned for part two in the journal series, okay? The second video will tell you all about the places that you can make your journals. I will be mentioning platforms but I will not be telling you exactly where I got each journal printed because I want you to focus on solely the things you need, um, the thought process, the mindset that you need to be in to start a journal business. So I will make sure I put timestamps so you could just skip through this whole one minute, two minute, end the disclaimer and jump right into the video. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay guys, when deciding that you want to start a journal business. The first thing you, do, you need to do is decide what platform or platforms you will use. And when I say platforms, most of them are POD, print on demand platforms. Things like KDP, Redbubble, Zazzle, T Public, Printful, print, uh, Printful, Printify, T Launch and Barnes and Noble. So those are platforms and most of those platforms are print on demand. So that's one of the first things you should decide. Where do I want to publish my books? Who do I want to fulfill my books? Um, if it's a private publisher or printer, then you need to go your re do your research on these printers, see how they fulfill, see how much they charge. Um, just think about like, have you seen anybody else um, use them? Uh, what are they minimum quantity things like that? So no matter if it's a print on demand or a private place You need to decide what platform or what printer you want to use. I Just want to quickly say these are in no particular orders. You still need to do every single one of these things But next I'm going to talk about brand or pen name You need to decide if I'm going to print these journals or publish these journals under my name Am I going to create a brand name that's totally separate from who I am as a person? Am I going to have a pen name, which is my alter ego or somebody who I want to publish under? It could be Joe Smokes if that's what your pen name is. Your business can be called Joe Smokes Publishing if that's what you want it to be. Um, if you want to write under your name, but as like a shorter version, if I wanted to write under my name, but a shorter version, I would just publish under C. Smith. C. Smith can be a thousand different people. Now, one of the key things, if you do choose to use certain platforms, make sure you are creating your brand to stand out. You have a logo, you have a header, you have um, possibly things that you could put on the receipts. A lot of these print on demand sites encourage you to put your social media information on the receipts and your logo so it identifies you. Another thing when choosing pen name and brand logos, um, somewhere on your journal, you should identify yourself on that journal, whether it be the back, in the left corner, top corner, the center, or somewhere inside of the journal. Um, also, and if you have been publishing on different platforms or you want them to be led to your website, have that identifier somewhere in your journal. It could be in the first couple of pages if you do um, something about telling them exactly how to use the journal, if that's the type of journal you use. But make sure that you are branding yourself as that business or in your pen name business so people can know where to find you so they can come back and buy more if they truly enjoyed what you published. We're going to talk about niche. Um, people say niche, niche, whatever you're liking, that is up to you. You need to figure out who you are going to publish for. This does not have to be um, one thing it can be two things it can be two high passionate uh audiences that combine it could be sloths and pandas it could be pandas and snakes it could be a unicorn panda um however you would like to create it you need a niche a hungry niche um you can still find tons of untapped niches 
uh, here on Amazon, on Pinterest, things that people have not type like tapped into but it's all about how you do the research so when starting your journal business you definitely need to do research you need to think about this um do you have a community who would be able to use a journal a planner or something that you can create a custom interior say you do real estate can you create a real estate journal for real estate agents or real estate insurers or brokers or whatever to keep a list of their things their appointments their open houses some type of format that they can keep to create um, to just make it easier for them in their job is there something like that out there if there is check out the reviews see what that type of product is already lacking and make yours better make yours stand out more and then market to a certain type of real estate agents you can uh, market to moms who are real estate agents dads who are um i'm saying military who are real estate agents you can market to millennial uh millennials who are real estate agent it's just that's like three different niches in one basically but the key to it is find that untapped niche and then go in see if there's something similar or see if there's something there if there's not you be the first to create it and then it would start a trend next you need to decide are you going to rely on organic traffic or run ads paid ads um use influencers to do advertising websites or social media platforms so most of the times most of my um journals are through organic traffic because i've done my research i've written down my seo and keywords um i see where the people who want my journals where they purchase from the most so i make sure that i'm on those platforms if you want to uh basically push traffic to your journals you can use things like pinterest ads etsy ads if you want to put them on etsy um, you can use facebook ads uh you can use influencers to post ads especially if you find an influencer who has a lot of followers and a lot of engagement that is in your niche and you can send them a journal for a post or you can just have them post because it speaks to their audience you are sure to get sales that way because she's already in that niche or she or he is already in that niche and it's just like referring um, a product to the people who follow her because they're already following her or him for inspiration now she's giving them something hey look what I found that can help all of us who are in the real estate field to create and book our appointments and things much easier so that's just a way that you can decide whether you want to rely on organic traffic by doing lots of research getting your keywords SEO and all that together or pay for ads influencers to um, promote your product big thing once you decide on your brand and your pin name you need to decide what platforms do you want to be on do you want to engage with um, audiences or customers on Instagram um, snapchat Twitter Pinterest Facebook or even on TikTok because TikTok is really moving up the ladder now it used to be like musically used to be dub smash used to be triller all of those things people use but you need to decide where do my buyers in my audience hang out at is it mostly on instagram cool let me go ahead create an instagram create a facebook page run ads through both channels get followers get people on my landing page or on my store to purchase these products day in and day out so just decide what type of social media influence you may want to have you do not have to do this but sometimes it's best if you can get in there on facebook and run a facebook ad and i also will give you this little tip if you don't decide to be on all of these platform platforms i still suggest you secure all of the names the domain name and all of that for all of these platforms that you can because you never know your business or journal business may blow up and then there's someone with the name that you wanted or pretending to be your business influencing customers to buy from them versus you we're going to talk about price are we a high-end journal publishing company are we low in with low quality so what i consider high end now being in the business for like over two years now and since 2017 kind of just scoping out things high end to me is custom interior something that is customized something that will um, be easier for me to use based on the audience and then to me low end low quality is just a nice cover with line sheets i'm not saying that the quality is horrible but to me it's a lower 
price be something under $7.99. High-end custom interior is more so of $9.99, $10.99, and on up. Probably even $16.99 depending on the pages and the amount of work that you put into it. So what I am going to do next is I am going to show you guys a few journals. And when I talk about like low quality and um, high quality custom interiors, blank interiors, and just different things that kind of help you decide um, to be ready for the next video when I tell you how um, or teach you how to make your journal so this is still us learning what you need to start your journal business and i'm going to show you a few different examples going with the custom interior this journal here has tabs um i don't know if it's going to come up on the screen but i will show you guys it has this page for notes um and then it's basically blank lines in there and then we have um some dot grid pages and then we also have a tab where I can put sales in here. And then the last tab is like a prayer journal. So things that you could do your daily prayers there. And this is really nice. It has a pocket in the back as well, if you can see that. And the cover has like these two different slots. So it has this cardboard with this clear thing here. All right. And I think it, does it have a pocket in the front? Let me see. It has the full, like, calendar here in the front of that one. Oh, sorry, guys. I dropped something. All right, so that's a custom, high quality. Look at that real heavy spiral, okay? So, to me, my Manifest Those Coins um, 31 Days to Money Magic Journal is pretty thick, 7.5 by 9.25. And it is fully customized. I'm going to just, it is fully customized where you could write words. It has prompts um, in each pages. It tells you, hey, day 21, we're focusing on faith. And then it says, nothing, ha nothing will happen until you believe it. Get out of your own way. And then you have a space to write, okay? So these are different little prompts create money prompt then it tells you what to do and then you have space to write so that's another custom journal handmade by me see me right there so that's another custom journal now these are big this size is big in the uh, planner community and it's basically like a little to-do list so you can keep this in your uh, purse but it is just customized with a checklist that is completely the same thing on every single page but again it is customized and it will be used only for a checklist i would write my checklist out check things off write a few notes at the bottom keep it going but i can quickly throw this in my purse throw it in a briefcase suitcase wherever i am all right so those are your custom interiors all right so then we have this small paperback uh spiral journal um, I say paperback because the back of this is super bendy. Um, it does have a folder in the back, but the papers are bent because of where I've had it. But this is a journal that is completely lined paper, blank lined paper. And I've written in this um, basically the whole way through. But you can tell the quality of it. It's blank lined. It's spiral, but it's super non, let's see, more so. It's not sturdy. <laughs> can't withstand all of the things that us creatives go through all right so now I have another paperback journal here um, pretty cover on the inside and outside and then in inside it is completely dot grid so the whole thing is dot grid and it's on cream paper so those are two paperback journals one with dot grid one with blank lines but they are like paperback um, if I was to bend this back it would probably stay there so it has a creep so that's what I'm saying when I say quality all right so now we're going to talk about these uh, hardcover journals so this is a hardcover journal here and that the quality goes up a little bit but it is completely blank so it has nothing but dot grid on the inside like the paperback one but the difference is it is a hard cover. I can't bend this back. Um, it will still sit flat on the table. 
um, when you're writing. So that's a plus. Have another hardcover journal. It's a little bit smaller. And again, the quality goes up because it's hardcover and it's all paper in the inside, okay? Blank line paper. Now we have a larger 8x10 hardcover journal. And the inside of this has perforated papers. I don't know if you can tell, but this is one of the books where you can, I'm going to tear the page. So you can tear the page out, okay? So we got a nice white page out, but the pages are perforated, as you can see, but it's all blank lines. So that quality went up a little bit more. So this is like a $15 journal. Hardcover, I can... I can tear my pages out. Um, it's sturdy. It's big. I can take it with me to class. Um, even the lines look different on this page here, if you can see that. Hope you guys can see that. But that's just a different in the quality um, as things go up. So those were custom interior paperback journals. There were a few spirals that were custom. Some paperbacks that just had dot grid and line sheets. Then you had the hardcover journals, which each all had different characteristics to them. So those are just some different ideas for you to think about what type of journal you want when you start your journal business. Again, guys, the next video, I will be showing you how to make your journals and what sites to use. I probably will not cover all of them and you'll probably see those journals again because I don't want to give you guys too much to be too overwhelmed. If you want site by site um, and in detail journals, I have more journal videos on my channel and I'll make sure that I link them in the bio below. If you do not want to miss out on this series, I suggest that you hit the notification bell. I suggest that you subscribe to my channel. I suggest that you like this video. Also, this is just the first video. I have uh, at least four or five more. So if you have questions, here is the prime time for you to start asking those questions. So while I'm going through these videos, I can make sure that I'm answering and bringing you guys the content, content that you need um, to create your journals or just start your journal business. So again, I am Cinquanta Cox Smith of www.cinquantacoxsmith.com. You can check out all of my courses on www.gumroad.com backslash Cinquanta Cox Smith. I am on Instagram at Cinquanta Cox Smith, and I hope you guys enjoy the how to start your journal business video. It was kind of long, but I will make sure I add in the timestamps. So guys, until next time, I love you more than I love this video. Peace.